Judge Kirkpatrick, inspiration for the nation, celebrating people we feel good about. We got a man in this community that we must celebrate, Mr. Willie Morgan. Mr. Willie Morgan has been a publisher of a newspaper, worked for City Hall, but he's been a tireless advocate for our community, making sure that black folk in particular had a seat at the table, but not only a seat at the table, making sure that they are that the officials in this community are held accountable for the things that they have promised and a lot of broken promises along the way. But Willie Morgan is one of those tireless advocates through his work with the NAACP, among other organizations, which we will discover shortly. This is a brother, a man, an elder in our community that we must pause, celebrate, and recognize for the work that he has done. I want to call him an unsung hero. I call him a John Lewis of Syracuse. He met John Lewis. He'll talk about that as well. But I think as a community, we must. We must pause and recognize the folks who are out here doing the work, who've been doing the work, to let you know that advocacy is not a new thing in this community, but there are bridges. There are people who are bridges to the places that we are now. So we must stop and recognize and give Mr. Willie Morgan his due. But we got a lot to talk about with Willie. Willie Morgan and I met a few years, well, several years ago, but uh, we first came into close contact when we were both at City Hall under Mayor Tom Young. Now, you were there long before I was, mm. but when I came, it was in the late, early 80s, a lot of controversy about when I came, but this ain't about me, this is about you. Talk about when you first came to Syracuse and uh, where you grew up, and a little bit about uh, what, what you experienced. Well, I uh, came to Syracuse in 1963. I had uh, spent four years in the Air Force, and I had started a gas station, which uh, just about took my health. I was spending uh, 40 hours a, a day, which don't have half 24. And so, I, there was no work in Auburn, so I decided we will move to Syracuse, move to Syracuse at that time. And uh, the little brown jug had burnt down, and Sam Child offered me a job at, four, at um, $45 a week, which was money back in those days. <laughs> so I, from there, I, I kind of sprouted out, and I began to do ends and art jobs around, around Syracuse. I'm not sure exactly when I got politically involved in Syracuse. Something must have ignited that, mm -hmm. and I think maybe what ignited that uh, was seeing the civil rights movement as people began to get beat and stuff like that, and uh, Reverend Forrest Adams and Reverend Mike and a lot of the ministers here kind of pulled us in and said, you've got to get involved. And uh, so we got involved with that, and then there was organizations that came to Syracuse, like I believe EO, or OLO, something like that, and and uh, Peace, and 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 uh, the Model Citizens Process. There were, and these organizations did not; these organizations did not exist uh, at that time. They were just starting up, or what? Yeah, the the uh, uh, the Model Citizens Process started sometime, I believe, in. Uh, in the late 60s. Now, it's my understanding, I, I, I do recall that up until this time, the city and the county was Republican. Mm -hmm. Something happened to Syracuse when John Kennedy made a, somehow or another made a call to Martin Luther King, which we was all interested in. And at that time, we said, we're going Democrats. Mm -hmm. Everybody... By the way, Ulysses, Ulysses, Ulysses kind of ran on the Republican Party. Right, right. Yeah. And uh, so we got involved, and we was going to get Lee Alexander elected, who was running against Gartiria. Up until this time, there was never had been a, a Democrat. I think most of them was always Republican. And so we all got together, the Henry Jackson, the Dave Prater, the Val Archery, Kitty Savage, and all of those who got, got together, and we was going to get Lee elected. We got Lee elected. I believe Lee got elected in 1969. 
Right, right. Got elected in '69. What did he do? Four terms. He did. He, he Way won. Way more than that, right? Well, yeah. Well, no, it, he, he got what? What is? Well, how many years is sixteen? Four terms. Four terms. Okay, because he he kind of retired. He uh, got in a little trouble. There. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's one way of putting it. Yeah. He kind of, he was retired. Because, you know, when I first started at City Hall, that's when the investigation was yeah. coming. We, we, they were, like, moving files out the way. And yeah, there, there yeah. There was a new mayor at the time. Yes, and yes. Well, and so we really, really got involved. And then the model citizen process, uh, with a guy by the name of Reginald Gary, I believe. Reginald kind of convinced us all and there was a new word that came out that I didn't know what it meant, but they talked about citizen participation. Mm, mm -hmm. What the heck is citizen participation? And we, we went into some training. The government gave us programs and stuff to train us how to participate in the government. Because all the time before, we were being used by the government. But now we seem to have a voice in trying to make develop things. And we, like I said, we had the... We had the the people around us uh, that would really know how to how to train and how to talk and and so it got to be pretty. In fact, it got to be exciting, you know, to work on projects and and, 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 and watch how the boys. When I said the boys would try to fool you, and what that would just fool the boys, Willie. <laughs> the job and Govins and all those guys, you know. And, Frank Kelly, a lot of the guys, you know, they were... Now, these are contractors? No, these was guys who was involved in the government. Uh-huh, uh -huh. You know, they were the one that, that uh, who probably always ran the government, you know, like, you know, they were the young, the Walters and all those guys. They mm -hmm. were the guy who always ran the government, and, and but we had no idea right. about running things. So I think the first original grant for Model Cities was like $5 million. I mean, man, that was a lot of money. And so you're working for the Model Cities at this time? I was, I was on that board. On the board? Was, yeah, they had, they had the, they had, I was on the physical planning board. So, uh, and it was, I don't know how many different groups it were, but it was, it was, it was the board, and then there was task forces. And I think I was on the physical planning task force, which to me gave me a lot of power. Because then, what do you want to do? And nobody could do anything except come through that task force, that physical planning task force. And Homer Davis, Tillman, I mean, the group, I mean, I can't call all the names, but it was a bunch of us. And there was still some real concern, white people living in this neighborhood, who was also talking about citizen participation. Mm -hmm. You're not going to spend a dollar just so we know where it's going. So from there, uh, we learned a lot about citizen participation. How and, get, and is that where, I mean, where did your energy and fire around making sure that we had equal voice at the table or that we had what was promised to us in this community? Where did that fire from you for you come from? I don't really know. I have no idea as to what time it, it, it ignited that fire. But I guess we saw that there was so much we could do. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and one of the things that I think began to, to ignite some fire, I got tired of being tricked. I got tired of being lied to. I got tired of people taking advantage of us. So talk about that. What was going on that you were being lied to, tricked, and taking advantage of? Well, we was being lied to about uh, voting. We were being lied to about uh, community involvement. At that time, they was tearing down the, the old 15th Ward. And you know this is before, this is was this when eighty one was being built? Uh, or afterwards, this was it, the fifteenth ward was torn down before eighty one was built. Mm -hmm. In in fact, I I can recall that they they didn't finish they didn't finish the downtown part. I think that's about the last part of it they finished was the downtown part. Uh, but somehow or another, we had we had we had guys. Who was talking things and, 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 and kind of pushing us along? Um, Chester Seals, who was uh, one of the guys, uh, he was a postman. Um, and then there was that Rudy Duncan. Um, 
Chester Whiteside. It was it was quite a bit. Reverend Proctor, Emma Proctor. He was really our leader. At the old People's Enemy Zion. At, the, at that time, the People's Enemy Zion was up on Fair. Fair. Yeah. Seven Eleven East Fair. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and so he was pushing us along to do certain things and telling us what we could do. And and there was we was getting a lot of ideas from out of town. I believe from the guy who the first black mayor of Gary and Anna. You know, we was hearing all these voices and and all these minority newspapers print things. So we was getting a lot of ideas as to how we could fight these battles. So fast forward. So before you came to Syracuse, you grew up where? I grew up in Georgia. Mm -hmm. I was raised in Georgia, um, and I had been on. I actually, I I, I had traveled early on um, because we came up as a migrant on the farms, Kings Ferry and stuff like that. In my when I was 11, 12 years old, well, they I, still have migrant workers. Yeah, in Kings yeah, Ferry. yeah. My 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 cousin used to run that camp out there mm -hmm. at. Uh, uh, one of those camps out there. Uh, so, but when I got my in my last year, my last year of uh, I was my eleventh grade. I spent my eleventh grade in Canton, Ohio, with some cousins and an aunt. And I had to go back to Georgia to get my last year because they didn't have any transcripts in there for me. Mm -hmm. So I went back to Georgia to finish my finish my last year of high school. And I I I kind of enjoyed Georgia. Except I was driving a lady called Miss Emma Jean Hatcher. Talk about driving Mrs. Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was driving Miss Emma Jean Hatcher. And the last day my, I was getting ready to go get my diploma, she told me, she said, she had gave me one of her husband's suits, so I, I didn't have no clothes. She gave right. me one of right away on. And, and so I happened to come up through the woods. We lived back over Highland, and come up through the woods and I saw the sheriff's car there. Mm. I says, oh, what the heck is the sheriff's car doing up there? So rather than coming in the house like I normally would, I came back in the pantry and I could hear him talking. And I heard him say, that old so-and-so, he called me the N-word, of course. Mm -hmm. If he keep backing out, because they parallel park down in Georgia. If he back out one more time, said, I'm going to put his so-and-so butt in jail. And Miss Emma Jean Hatcher said, Oh, I got enough money to get him out of jail. And the sheriff said, You ain't got enough money to get him out of hell. That convinced me at that moment, get out of Georgia. Okay. So the same day that I graduated from Georgia, a bean truck came through from Florida. And uh, I jumped that bean truck, went on down to Pioca, Florida. And from Pioca, I came up, up to. Uh, Back up to Auburn, where my uncle was. Uncle for Auburn, and then you came to Syracuse. No, I went four years in the Air Force. Air Force, and then you came to Syracuse. Then I, then I came to Syracuse. Mm -hmm. uh, talking with Willie Morgan, Syracuse icon, treasure about the his, history of advocacy and working on behalf of black folks in this community. Mm -hmm. So, so Willie, you, uh, you work in model cities. Mm -hmm. uh, you start to get this feeling that you want to be mm -hmm. part of the change and bring part of the change. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about uh, what's, what, what you started to get involved in, what you started to get engaged in uh, to begin this work of advocacy. Yeah, well one of the things that being on the Model Citizens Task Force allowed us to go to other cities. Uh, like we went to Hartford, Connecticut. I mean, I'm seeing black police chiefs. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing black firemen and black police officers. And there was one lady there who she pulled me aside and she said, we need to talk. And back in them days, we always had a little medicine, something for medicinal purposes. So she said, what you got in your room? I said, girl, I got a little medicine. She said, well, it's a little, little taste of something, so. Yeah, a little something, yeah. So she came in, I'm, I, I don't know, I can't think of her name now, because she died of cancer a few years later. But she brought and she says, well, she said, let me tell you something. She said, you can always, she said, they're going to always screw you. They're going to do that. You can't stop that. She said, but one thing about it, with the education and thing of knowledge, at least you can get paid for what, you, some, you can get something for what, they, what you have to give up. Mm. 
and she, Mill Cyber, Mill Cyber, that was her name, Mildred Cyber. And so she told me how to start it and they get my part out of the system. Mm -hmm. And so I said, oh, so that's the way you do it. She said, yeah, she said, this is the way you well, do it. What did she tell you? George, I don't know, maybe I had drunk too much of that medicine. I don't <laughs> quite remember, remember right now for her. But I do remember her telling me that, and, 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 and yes, I did, I can remember some of the things she said. She said, you gotta watch out for semantic infiltration. Oh, what'd that mean? Well, that means... Or was that under the medicine? So <laughs> <laughs> uh, You know, you, you, what it meant, it meant that you could, you, could, you could have people telling you things that wasn't true. Okay. And fooling you to believe certain things. And she said, you got to watch what making you think a certain way. What makes you think? certain mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. And she says, and she used a thing like, you see a woman with a pretty dress on, and you say that's a pretty woman. But actually it's the dress. It ain't the woman. <laughs> <laughs> and she, I mean, it was a lot of stuff, because I mean, the more we, more we took a little medicine, the more we learned. The more you learned. Yes. So you, you, you're here in Syracuse. <coughs> you, when do you start to get into like working with the NAACP? You bought the Syracuse Gazette. You also been an entrepreneur. You've also been an entrepreneur to, all, all this time as well, doing your own little hustle on the side. So let's start talking about the work that you did. Let's start with the, the Syracuse Gazette. Okay. Well, let's start. A, a well, go back. You tell me. Community development. Yeah. Community development. Right. Gary with the city Pickett. Of yeah, Gary Pickett. <clears throat> I, I, well, I, I, what happened was I, I was running up a, a little business, and I was doing very, very well. What was the business? A fiction house. I had a, I had a big sign on my truck that 1,001 jobs. And I mean to tell you, everybody was calling me. And I, I was making money right and left. And I bought a brand new car. And the internal revenues came out to me. Uh -huh. And the internal revenues pulled me in, and they was finna get me big time. Because I, I wouldn't be paying taxes. I didn't know that. But just so happened, a, a guy, Nicky, who was a Jewish fellow, worked with it. He worked, I had done work with his mother at his house, so he knew me. And he says, Will, he says, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. He says, I am going to take care of you. I'm not going to let the FBI get you. He said, but you need to get you some education. Mm -hmm. And you need to run how to run a business. So at that time, a program came in that was giving veterans uh, Executive business course at sure. CCBI. Mm -hmm. So I had to go to CBC. I, that's when I learned and I got, but I, I couldn't run my business and get an education at the same time. Mm -hmm. So by me working with the model citizens process, Gary Picker, who was a young guy. He was a developer here, right? He, yeah, he, he eventually came to develop. At that time, he was working with community development mm -hmm. and he was a student up at SU. So Gary Pickard, he said, Will, he said, listen, why don't you come? I said, well, I was looking for a job. I, in fact, I had went down to the health center to try to get a job. I wanted something paying about $5,000 a year. And Gary Pickard said to me, he said, listen, he said, Will, I hear you're looking for a job. I said, I am. He says, why don't you come and work in the office with me? I said, Gary, I have no, I have no office experiences. He said to me, he said, listen, I have no experience in dealing with people. You teach me how to deal with people, I'll teach you how to work in the office. And uh, I said, Gary, yeah, I don't even know really what, I can't even spell memorandum. Let's know, write one. <laughs> he said, I'll teach you. So at that time, Gary said, I'll pay you $11,600 a year, and you wear a shirt and tie, and you go to work in the office. So I said, well, that sounds good. So that's where my, uh, uh, community development. Thing. That's working for the city. Working for the city of Syracuse. Gary spent a year. Gary spent a year, and then he went on to become a big time developer. As you know, he yeah millionaire. Big time. Yeah, big time. And I got to be the assistant director, so I learned a lot in dealing with things. And also, I began to read the Federal Register, 
and clearly understand why, what a budget meant, how a budget works. For instance, the budget for the county at that time was, I think, uh, almost a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. The 23rd Legislative District, which I'm in, we wouldn't get none of that money. Model cities, uh, uh, the capital budget, they was using. Uh, 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 so, so let's. Well, so the twenty third now is the nineteenth. But it, well, is it the nineteenth or the seventeenth? Or seventeenth? I don't know which one it well, is. It's one of those. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So at, at that point, I said, "Well, I'm getting to look at what what the need now. I'm right in the middle of the needs and what is supposed to go to the city. What the city is getting like." The twenty third legislative district at that time was the only county legislative district that allowed a, the lied wholly within the city of Syracuse. All the rest of the legislative district picks up part of the county, part of the city. And, and, and so, is that when you started to advocate for having yes. a seat at the table, and that's how y'all got Junie Dunham? Yes. Well, yeah, we we decided we decided that okay. Well, actually, we had, you know what, that was an early fight on uh, getting a com common council by the name of Bob Ward. Right. And I don't, I know I got involved in the fight, but I probably wasn't no more involved in the fight with getting Junior Dunham in. Actually, we wasn't, didn't want Junior. You didn't want him. We didn't want Junior. We didn't. You hear that, Junior? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, we, well, what happened was... <clears throat> We, well, so for, for context, Junie Dunham, the first African American to serve in the county legislature. Yes, yes. You didn't want him. No, and I, I, I can tell you, it wasn't about not wanting, but what that happened? That wasn't your guy. Y'all had who? Who did y'all want? We wanted Larry Briggs. Ah. But what happened? We got together, Christy Savage and all us, and Henry Jackson, and all the guys got together, met down here on Salina Street, and we made a We 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 got the Democrat, the Republican, that says. We will give you Joe Atkins. Okay. We gave Joe Atkins. So we, we ain't going to. Mike Atkins dad. Mike Atkins dad. We're not going to run a white guy in that district who would always at the time. And so we got the, the, the Democrat to say, well, we'll give you, we'll give you uh, a black one in for the Democrat. We won't run a, we won't run a white guy. And so what happened was we wanted to run Larry and Somehow, the junior and them boys, they, they had a they had a little group of, some, some sort of boys they were from the district or something. So we got mad about that, and we ran Larry on the liberal ticket. Believe me, the liberal ticket used to be a very strong ticket. Right, because if you think about New York City, uh, John Lindsay won as a yeah, liberal. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 we was very, we was... So we was gonna run. So 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 what happened? So Junie's running against your your guy. Junie's running against that. But Junie ran as a Democrat. Junie's ran as a Democrat. And so we, well, we said okay. That, that's great. That, no, we we could, Norm Pinker at that time was working with Lee Alexander. Lee Alexander got elected in like I said. Seventy nine. Seventy nine. No, sixty nine. Sixty nine. Right. Sixty nine. Yeah. And so Norm came to us and said, Norm Pinker said, Listen, Will, you guys. Whatever you want, you know, let me know and, and, and we'll we'll work with you. So, okay, all right. Okay, that's that sounds good. That sounds good. So at that time we all we all kind of said, well, we'll take Junior. Junior was by the way a very good county ledge. Worked very tireless. And I think somehow well, you, you, you're apologizing now for the slap, the slap earlier. That's what we, that's what this is. Y'all see that? You see how he did that? Judy was so good, right? Now he was good now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, certainly he served for a long time, twenty one years. Yeah. Uh, Judy would Judy would have been without a blemish, except I think he got with Mike Brightman. They was trying to put the steam plant over on. Uh, McBride Street. McBride Street. Yeah, and allegedly, and allegedly, uh, that Junie took a, uh, took a, took a bribe. But never got paid, but, you know, on paper, he's supposed to say, yeah, I'll do that, you know. But other than that, you know, community development was a very good thing for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we put sidewalks down here. We planted trees down here. Um, and one of the things that we really needed to do 
Uh, when I went to work for community development, there was, I forget how many hundreds of vacant structures there was, right. because the white, the white was, the white, now they had to start white building. White flight. Yeah, 81, at 81 and the extension had started to send a white flight, you know, and what they call it, a million dollar mile. And so down here became like a ghost town. So help me with this because talking about your advocacy, you, you, you continue in the fight. You, you, you now, you're a publisher of the newspaper. How did that start, the Syracuse Gazette? Because when I was a student at Syracuse, what I remember mm -hmm. was the Syracuse Banner with Layman Herring, mm -hmm. the Impartial Citizen with uh, Rob right. Pichard, mm -hmm. uh, and Kofi. And I knew you had the Gazette before that, mm -hmm. but I only remember yeah, those. the Banner. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, Impartial Citizen, I don't know when they started that, but. Uh, and then, of course, Urban CNY Constitution later, later on, but Heritage, Banner, and I always heard about the Gazette, but I don't remember seeing it, but maybe I did, I don't remember. Right, well, what, came, what happened was, Dave Prater was trying to run the Gazette, and Dave Prater would use the, you know, he'd kick everything. Dave was pretty hard, bam, 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 bam. And Dave could not get an advertisement to pay, it took some time, I think about, in order to print the Gazette, it would be probably around $600 a week just mm -hmm. to print the Gazette. And that was pretty good. For, I mean, that's a lot for those days. Yeah, but he, he, didn't, he wasn't getting the advertisement. Right. So I said to Dave, I said, Dave, I said, if you, if you, want, if you want me to help you, I'll help you. But, you know, for every dollar that, every dollar that comes in for, for advertisement, I gotta get twenty five. I gotta get twenty five dollars out of every every that twenty five percent out of every dollar. And so he says, okay. I guess he thought I couldn't do it, but I went to everybody I knew and I says, I need an ad. Okay, will. Okay, will. Okay, will. Including including some of the banks and stuff. And uh, I went to Doctor Cohart. And I said, Doctor, I need to do this. I went to some of my banker friends, um, Little, who ran the Key Bank, was one of the vice presidents. Oh, Dick Little. Dick Little. That's I, it. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I used to work at the Wow, what a memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Dick Little said to me, he said, uh, Will, how much you need? And I was telling him, I said, Dick, I said, if you could help me with this. He said, oh, I no problem. He said, I got, the, I, got, I got the budget, and I'll make sure that you get so much. Yeah, he was money. like a marketing guy at the bank. Oh, he was a beautiful fella. So I thought we thought to bring in the money, and then Dave thought that, Take the money. I wouldn't get my 25%. So I said, Dave, if you don't get my 25%, I'm not bringing in the ad. He said, I don't care. I, I'm gonna get. I guess he thought now that he could get them, the well went dry. So now he had nothing. He says, he says, uh, he says, why don't you buy the gazette? And I says, how much you want for it? And he told me. And he said, I said, well, the only thing is, Dave, I have no idea as to how to run a newspaper. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how to run a newspaper. And I, I, at that time, there was no justification. We did it on a, a, on a typewriter. Mm. Um, and so I said, well, if you give me six weeks working with me, give me six weeks, and a typewriter, I said, I'll buy the Gazette from you. And I did. And this is uh, uh, the issue that I'm looking at is the Syracuse Gazette, volume three, number 23. Central New York's only Black News Weekly. Yeah. And you know, this was published on June 9th, 1979. That's the day. My birthday was the next day. That's why I'm really mm -hmm. shouting that out. But anyway. So if it's the 23rd, if it's the, I, I think the volume would represent a week, maybe? I think so it would come out weekly. It's weekly. So that might be 23 weeks. Might be 23, might be two years. Well, it'll Maybe be third year in the 23rd week. Yes. Let's yeah. see, let's, let's go with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so at that time, Dave had promised me he's gonna leave me his, he's gonna leave me his photo file mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And I had this idea as to how you run a newspaper. Uh, I had no idea. So Dave walked, took the, took the typewriter, Walked off and left me with nothing. Wow. Nothing but the office. Uh, over the Santa's place here on the Salina Street, where it used to be the piano place. Mm -hmm. I had no idea about running a newspaper. So there was a, there was a, there was a, there was a white guy at Model Cities, 
At that time, we had them built model cities. That model city, the model neighbor, model, what one on South there? Um, Syracuse model neighborhood. No, Syracuse. What? Southwest? Southwest. Thank Southwest. you. Yes, okay, Southwest. the Syracuse, you know what you're saying? It's a Syracuse model neighborhood facility. Facility, okay. A.K.A. Southwest Community Center, A.K.A. Syracuse Community Connection. Okay. All right. All right. All there right. we yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> so there was a guy there, and he said, well, I'll come help you. And he come, and he thought to put together, but it was too something. It just it, it bled with what I wanted to do with the community. And he wanted to charge me so much and so much, and I said, well, I can't afford that. So then I, I said, well, I'm going to run it a different way. So what happened? Kitty Washington, Joyce Hatfield, those are some names out of the past. Mm -hmm. Joyce Hatfield was one of the few women lawyers I knew at that time. They said, we'll come help you. And so we did. They, we got the running pretty good. And then the, the kids from YCS, one of the groups that came up, and they said, well, we need for you to help these kids. We'll love work for you for free. Mm -hmm. to, to get the paper out. Get the paper out. Beautiful young kids. I mean, if I call some of the names now, you, would, you, would, you wouldn't believe. Uh, Jeanette, Jeanette McCann, Jeanette, what's her name? Jeanette, she worked. My daughter came in, the vet came in, the wife came in, uh, and then we got Coffee Quay and Akbar. Mm -hmm. So we was doing, we were running along real well, real well. But then Kofi went and started his own paper. No, 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 they didn't start then. We Not then, but I mean eventually. Yeah, eventually. We was going along beautiful. And everybody seemed to start to see, as you can see. Now think about this. Dave Prater was doing, Dave Prater was doing, uh, let's see, four pages. Right. Four pages, let's see, two. No, they were doing eight pages. We went to 20, 20 some pages. And, and everybody thought, well, we're going to take this paper, this, this thing that we you know, so they came after us. Um, and like I said, my daughter wrote uh, uh, Nieces Nook. My wife wrote uh, uh, Nieces Nook. Nieces Nook. What was she writing about? Uh, Nieces Nook was one of the, what was she near? Is it, is yeah, she is wrote it, about the high school. She, oh, okay. She covered okay. high school, all okay. the high school people. Mm -hmm. And then there's a guy by the name of, of um, I wonder how he's doing now. I hadn't seen him in 100 years. Uh, uh, Bill Pierce, mm -hmm. uh, who wrote up Entertainment. We got John Young. We, we were getting to get a, these develop are, a group. These are all names from the history of Sarah. Yeah, John, John uh, uh, Cal wrote a real estate page, and people just writing, and, you know, and everybody got interested in the newspaper. And we would drop them off at every church at the city. We'd drop them off every week, put them in the bars, put them everywhere so everybody was getting in. We didn't have no trouble getting advertising. Mm. It, it, was, it was great because one of the things that when you have a, something to communicate, you know, everybody was reading. And the reading, I know they was reading, because, you know, sometimes I'd be sitting up in the bar at Tipping In, want to walk up and grab me in the car and say, that, that, you didn't write that right, you know. Uh, in yeah. fact, we did an article. I mean, what about that, being a journalist, but also being a, covering the community, the yeah. good, the bad, the ugly. And the church. And, the and, church, and, and, yeah. and telling, the, telling yeah. the truth, Yeah. but then also got to be in the community. got to be in the community. And deal with the repercussions yes. of that. Yes, well, let me tell you a real quick story. We, you get beat up on air, no matter what you do, right or wrong, right. you're going to get beat up. Right. So I said, well, listen, this is one week we ain't going to get beat up. This is what we're going to do, boss. I said, tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do something on motherhood. Ain't nobody can beat you up about motherhood. Okay. So we wrote a beautiful article on motherhood. I'm sending it tipping in. This guy's on the street. I'm sending it tipping in. And this guy walked in. I had a beautiful picture of a woman and some children. He walked in and grabbed me in the collar. He said, Margaret, I'm knocking your block off. I said, for what? What did I do? He said, that's my wife and, and my children. I said, well, he said, yeah, but she lived with another man now. Oh. So there was no safe, there was nothing safe about that. That's not a news. But anyway, you know how to, you know, I knew how to play it down. What happened, what happened was the, the newspaper got very, very popular. Uh -huh. In fact, on Article 11, 246, it says that 
if you got a minority newspaper in the city, that you have to you have to put in the invitation to bids. So look at this now. That I'm looking at it. Invitation to bids. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's four hundred dollars right there. Mm. So we know we have enough money to do what we want to and do. And you were, you were doing the paper while you were working for the city. Right, I'm working for the city. So did, were there was there ever conflicts about? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. In fact, what was the guy name that was in charge of Herald and the Post? He called Lee and told Lee that because he didn't want he didn't want me to put the paper out. They, he was trying to yeah, bury it. Yeah. So. Lee called me, but Lee didn't call me what he always had somebody to call me. Lee Alexander. Yeah. That, that, I tell you, that was one of the most beautiful person that I knew that was not biased and not prejudiced. Mm -hmm. Even when John went go and all of me trying to tell things on Red and Gary and trying to get me in off and go to them trying to get me in off, they could not. Lee said, well, listen. What, what, what are you telling me? In fact, I think he hired Wayne and told Wayne one time, so said Mr. Said, Wayne Dunham. Mr. Dunham. Who used to be the head of the NAACP. Yeah, he service. was he was hired, I think, for uh, the Park and Rec. Mm -hmm. And I can think, I remember Lee as he was saying, he says, don't stop raising hell. You know, he was that kind of guy. You know, he, so, so you, we mentioned, uh, and you said there was some conflicts. And yes, that, and yes. That was, you you said that they they tried to get you to stop. Yeah. Right. Well, did you ever were there ever things you were gonna say about the city, but you had to not say it in order to keep the paycheck? No. In fact, in fact, uh, Dave Michael told me who was got, the head of community development. Yeah. When we got into that police brutality thing. All right. Let's talk about that. Okay. So this is who was who was, who was uh, being, this is Dennis Collins. Dennis Collins. Yes. What happened to Dennis Collins? Dennis Collin was trying to document police brutality, and I think he was over in uh, the village. And at that time, <clears throat> the police was up there, and they were doing some very bad things over there. Mm -hmm. And so Dennis was recording it, had, had the camera. So they took the camera. Like deja vu, because we had the same thing recently, right? With somebody yeah. trying to yeah, go ahead. Right. Yeah. And they took the camera and beat him up pretty badly about it. Did he die? No, no, Dennis. Actually, Dennis was the first. Dennis was the first black person that brought a lawsuit against the city for police brutality, and Alan Rosenthal. Yeah. Um, and uh, Keith, I can't think of the other one name with him. They got. Uh, he ended up getting ten thousand dollars. I mm -hmm. hear about it. You know. But anyway. Uh, was this under Sardino as police chief? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sardino was. Mm -hmm. And so. They told me, uh, um, so then we said, well, we're going we're gonna to stop marching on City Hall. That, that's when I got it, really got involved. Oh, by the way, the way, way I got involved with the NAACP was John Young, John, um, what's the name? John, I can't think. What was John's name, Wayne? Remember? The, 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 the minister? John. John, yeah. Don't John. remember. Yeah. He, he, uh, he came to me, and I was running the newspaper, he said to me, he says, Will, he says, we need to revitalize the NAACP. So what, about what year is this? It had to be about the last, well, it had to be somewhere in the 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, because, it, and actually it had to be before I got really strong with this. Right. Uh, so so that, was this... Tommy or Wayne? Who who was it was T Tommy Blunt was before Wayne, right or after? He was. Uh, was it the minister? Hmm? Was well, it Proctor. Proctor. Yeah, Reverend Proctor. Yeah, but 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 yeah, but what was who was before who? Then Curling Sheldon mm -hmm. was, and, and and some of the boys out of uh, some of the guys out of the uh, Syracuse University. I can't call them all. Right? I think he was in the School of Architect. They didn't want to give up. They they didn't want to give up the NWCP. But they didn't have enough member of the chapter to keep a chapter. I don't know what how many members. So you mean the SU chapter? Or no, the, the the local chapter. Well, no SU chapter. At that time. Oh, yeah. so we're talking about the Syracuse Onondaga yeah. County, which yes. has been around since what the early twenties or something like that. All I know, I can't say when. All I know when we took when we 
went, went out to find out why it wasn't an active chapter. Mm -hmm. And that had to be in the in the seventies. Uh, so it was it just wasn't people weren't volunteering. Nobody was involved, you know, mm -hmm. they weren't doing anything. So John gosh. John, let's just call him John. Oh, Robin, oh gosh. Yeah, had three John Jones. John Jones, Robin John Jones. You had Thank three you. branches going here at, at that time. Don't but, forget but that. You said what did you say? There were three NAACP three branches, and they branches. were all vying against each other. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hazel okay. Yeah. okay. Three, Hazel Hazel down the back yes. The state president come down here and said, "You people get your stuff together." All right. So if you're not large enough. You got you got you have one chapter. So that's Wayne Dunham telling us that there were three competing. Yes, yes, cities. yes. So you got involved in the. And uh, uh, thank you for that, Wayne. Mm -hmm. uh, so you get involved, and then. This, what happens next? Well, what happens, uh, uh, Pastor John, he told me, he said, listen, because I didn't know how to put together a, it, you, you, have to, you have to get paid, you have, you, can't, you have to charge advertisement by, by, the, by, by how much you, you have to charge the advertisement, there's a, there's a, mm -hmm. There's some way you have to figure it out. I had no way of knowing how to develop that. Right. So uh, he told me, he said, listen, he said, I'll come and develop that, how much you charge, how many column inches your paper is, and all that stuff. He's going to do all the format for me. He said, but I want you to help me do what? I said, do what? He says, I want you to help me revitalize the NWCP. And I said, I said but they already, he said, no, he said, they're not doing anything. I'm telling you, that John, what was his name? John Jones. John Jones, mm -hmm. Robin John. He told me, he said, we're going to put it together. So, boy, I think that's the only man I know could cuss you out and never said a swear word. <laughs> <laughs> so what we did, we, 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 we began to fight to put it together and everything else. And we, we, brought, it, we brought it back to life. And at that time, um, now we had a very active chapter. And, uh, and, 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 and I think the membership must have went up almost 100 because they started to advertise and got all these people in. And we had some very, uh, very good educated people involved, white and black. It wasn't just black, you know, it was just white and black. Lillian Reiner, who was, who was chair of the, the Liberal Party, by the way. And, little, and she was donating money like you wouldn't believe to the NAACP. And people were taking out life membership. So now we got a viable NAACP. Uh, and so when John left, I think they brought in Robin Proctor. Mm -hmm. I think after John, John left, John John left, they brought in Robin Proctor. Now Robin Proctor was an old fighter, old civil rights fighter. Oh yeah. And know all the things. But something they did to Robin Proctor, and I'm not sure what it was, because Robin Proctor was also working for the city of Syracuse. Mm -hmm. He was at court enforcement or something like that. Right. And they brought up something against him. And I'm not sure why he had to leave the NWCP. So when you think about where we are today, and you also were involved with the minority contractors? Yes, somewhere, yes. Gamera uh, or something, I guess. Or something, I don't know. Actually, I'm not active anymore. And Back then? Yes. I mean, minority were, contractors. I remember you came in and you was head of the minority contractors. I was. Yes. You, you know how I came in. You know what happened, right? <laughs> you know what? I, I don't remember what happened. I just There was this little project called the Galleries of Syracuse. Okay. And they were trying to get this firm certified. And the person in the position at the time objected to it because. That person, um, because they believed that that was an illegitimate business. What do we call them? A sham. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they needed to be certified. So they got you. <laughs> oh, so that's how they, I know, all I remember, you showed up one day. Yes, right, because, they, right, I just like, all of a sudden, here I come. Right? Yeah, and not only did you show up, but you come up talking about something I never heard of. Some Juneteenth. What the hell is Juneteenth? I don't know. No, no, that's when they freed. I said, no, George. And I remember getting very upset with you. Yes. I said, no, they freed the slave in 19, well, 1865. 
Right. Say 1863 with the Emancipation. 1863, yeah. Right, they, right. You said, no, no, that's, I ain't no, I said, I know what they got in the record books, and you, you convinced me, and I have to admit that this thing, I hate to say it, but. Uh, I, so, so here's how, this is how I found out about Juneteenth. So when I was in, a student, my dad, now, with all due respect to the Gazette, mm -hmm. he, he, he was subscribed to the Buffalo Challenger. Oh, okay. So I he paid for that for me Audi, to get it. Audi ran the Buffalo Challenger. Right. Yes. So he, he he paid for me to get the Buffalo Challenger, mm -hmm. and they would have this thing called Juneteenth, and I didn't know what it was. Yeah. And so I started to do some research yeah. about it. Me, remember Harriet McDowell? Mm -hmm. Harriet McDowell. One, on one about. of the, there was a minority economic development, some kind of meeting mm -hmm. in Buffalo. I said, I'm going to go to the Challenger. Mm -hmm and asked them about this thing mm -hmm. called Juneteenth. Yeah, yeah. This was later on. And then uh, in 88, we started to plan the first ever Juneteenth. I remember when you did the thing, and I'll tell you, it was it was just beautiful. In fact, I served as one of time, I think I served as the, the Grand Marshal. Grand Marshal. That's right. Yes, I did. And uh, so, yeah, that, that was, that was community development was, was, was a good thing. You know, uh, it, quite as it, Cal, Dave Michael was not as bad as, as you know. Uh, because, and so just to give context, uh, community development, the agency of the city was responsible for what they call federal block grants. Yes. And these were monies that were used to do mm -hmm. all kinds of things, housing improvement, mm -hmm. economic development, mm -hmm. and all kinds of things mm -hmm. uh, through... And that and, and at that time there was lots of that kind of money. Yes. Not much of it now, but a lot then. Bill Clinton, I think, was in and Clinton was I mean, we had money, we could we couldn't spend all the money. But you know, one of the things though, what happened was the city of Syracuse wanted to use the community block grant for the capital budget. And that's how we were getting to have to fight to get money done. That's how we ended up getting the center built over there. Uh, they was going to spend the money to do the Mount Neighborhood Facility Syracuse, yeah. Southwest Community Center, Southwest Community, 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 Center. Community Center. Connections, yes. And they wanted to do the bridges and, 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 and certain things on South Avenue. And and I recall, I was looking at Cross, I must, I must have been at Cross Hines at the time. No, I, no, I was still, I was still, they was going to spend the money to do it. And, and so what we would do, we still all night long. And, and, and fight with them. And they, you know, what they would try to do, they figured try to wear us out. And I said, you know what? I said, I remember Mill Cyrus saying that you guys are going to do all kinds of stuff to get to us. I said, but hey, do what you want. I'll take tomorrow off if I have to. We're going to build that center. We're going to build it. So when you, so let's, let's think about your, do you think you have a legacy in this community? And if you do, you know you, what? what would you say it is? I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I have a legacy. You know, Are you just somebody that just did the work because yeah. the work was necessary, and yeah. and you didn't care who got the credit for it. You just went out and did it. Well, I, I don't know when you're doing things. You don't, you don't know. You're you just know. doing. It. Well, you know, you're doing it because it's the right thing to do. Right. Um, so, you know, what's your message then for today's you, right then? Yeah. So you, if you don't feel like you have a legacy, what then would you want the legacy to be when you're gone? For this community, like, what's the message to this generation of fighters? You got the young people on the streets right now. They're marching for police reform. They're marching for for change. Uh, they're not marching for change. They're demanding, it, right? That's what yeah. they. That's the language that they use. So, um, what would your what pass the torch along? What would your how yeah. would you how would you what would you want to say to them? I would hope I would want to say to them. That, that semantic infiltration. You know, like, the guy called me and said, well, we're going to defund the police. That's, that's not what they're asking you to do. They're asking you to put it together again. Put, put, take, out, take out the bad apples. You know, I, I, feel, I feel like if, if when Rodney King got beat, if they took Stacey Coon, put him in jail for 20 years, we would have been in better shape than we are today. When Dennis, when when uh, Jeremiah Mitchell got shot in the back, and that, and he pounded a pistol on them, and, and let those cops get away with it, took Chief Longo down to 
to uh, he wanted he he was going to tell the truth about that thing. What they did, they took him down to Miami to get a job. They went down there and wouldn't let him get a job in Miami. They threw some guy off the force in Oswego. So I think what has happened is the youth today is going through the same thing I went through. Mm -hmm. So what's your advice to them? Ooh. Or what's your encouragement to them? Tell you when they fool you. Listen, <clears throat> it's a funny thing. The devil, the devil can get you to eat that apple, and especially if he's a beautiful woman standing there with no clothes on. I'm eating the apple, mm -hmm. and I think what is happening today, the youth today, is eating the apple. They don't, they don't understand what the system is doing to them. Like we didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. You know, we. I so give understand. them some wisdom so they don't have to eat the apple. I have, I have. Right, right. I mean, because well, here's what I heard you say. You said that we weren't going to give up. We were going to stay on them until they built and gave us what they want. Yes. So what I'm hearing you say, even if you ain't say it, is stay on, right? Don't give up and keep fighting and keep demanding the change. That's what I'm hearing you saying, even if you didn't say it. Yeah. Well, you know what? One of the things that's happening right today, uh, and, and 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 even though we have the income to live off. Move off of West Bend Avenue, but every now and then one of the kids will walk by and says, "I want a house like that when I get, you know." And I'm saying, they see, they can see it. Even if I had this house out in the suburb, it wouldn't matter. But it matters because it's here. Mm -hmm. If I had to talk to the youth today, I would tell them, "Listen, I can tell you, don't give up." I crossed the border, George. When I came, when I came from, when I came from uh, Puka, Florida, after I went down there to come up to North, I had a pair of shoes on my feet. I had my clothes on a paper side. Look what I own today. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's 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 unimaginable. I was telling my wife last night as I, my little grandson was walking around the house, and. Talking about, he he want to watch my TV, and I said, he tell me go upstairs and watch. I said you go home and watch your TV. <laughs> you know what he says to me? My house too, my house too. And I think about my 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 grandfather slept over there in a the bed. My mama slept in the bed. And the kids slept on the on the pallet on the floor. And, but here's you got a grandson that can, you know. So yeah, I mean, how do you encourage them to do it though? I don't know. How do you talk to the youth well, today? Again, I have no what idea. I heard, what I heard you say was it's being visible and being planted so that they could see the example right in front of them and be encouraged to strive for what they're looking for. Right? Like, like you being there and they see you is enough of encouragement because you're doing the work and you're still standing. And you're the bridge to this next generation because of the work that you put in, along with fighters like. Mr. Wayne Dunham, your, yeah. your, your cut buddy. We out of time. Okay. But you know, I want to say this to, to him. Um, there was a dog that was had bit through a kid okay. on board, and I lived on beer. And I jumped that fence and choked that dog. I don't know why I did it or how I did it. I choked that dog off that kid. And did you know, I, I didn't think I had done anything. In fact, they... They tried to write it up a whole different way. But Mr. Dunham called me one day and he says, you know what, we're going to give you the highest award that the, that the NAACP branch can give. And that's how I end up with that award. So yeah, when you're doing things, it doesn't look like anybody sees it. You know, it doesn't look like when you write the Gazette. And I have changed, and people walk up to me right now and tell me, well, you know what, we missed it because of that. So, yeah, I have. I don't know what to tell them, George. I really don't. I, well, maybe some other time. How about this, Willie Morgan, Syracuse icon, doing the work? I, I think the message is pretty simple. Just do the work, and let your work be your example, and let your work speak for itself. That's what I'm hearing you say, Willie Morgan. We appreciate the work that you're doing in this community 
to make this community better? Willie Morgan. You got a business too, right? You still working? Oh, I have. Yeah, I do. I What's the name of your business real quick? Because this is a free commercial. <laughs> uh, it's, is Morgan, it? it's Morgan and Morgan's Home Inspection Building Consultant. What's the phone number, Willie? Uh, area code 315-415-1845. 315-415-1845. That's a free plug. For Thank you. Morgan. I really appreciate that. Because he's doing the work, and we really appreciate you. You are somebody we feel good about. Inspiration for the nation. Thank you, sir. Good. Good.